as for me, I believe. So today, guys, we're going to be carving our stencil of the month for April of 2024. We're calling this one The Bigfoot. We're also using our Clarendon inch and a half layout letters. Everything, as always, will be in links in the description below. I wanted to do something that had to have a shape to it rather than just rectangle. The other thing that makes this one a little bit different is we're carving it with the vertical grain, and that doesn't happen very often. Normally, the grain is going horizontal, so there's a couple things you got to keep in mind when you're carving something with a vertical grain. So this will be available on the website by the time you see this, but also if you're an executive member, this is what you get free. So in case you guys don't know what premium memberships and executive memberships, you get free stencils, free layout templates, along with discounts and all kinds of other things. We'll leave a link right here so you can go check out the website, makeawoodsign.com, where we have details on all the memberships. So let's get started. For this sign, we used a piece of pine that was three quarter inches thick and it was 11 by 18. So dad put his stencil on there and got it pretty centered. Then he centered where the top of the arch was gonna be with one of the letters. Now when you're doing an arch, you wanna make sure that you hold it down and you get it even from top to bottom. So dad had six inches on each side of the arch. That way it's not all cockeyed. Then once he put the letters on there, he made sure he had plenty of space to be able to get the profile in between the letters because this is gonna be outset. Once he did that, he just centered the eye in the middle of the bottom line of lettering. Then he centered his stencil and sprayed it with the primer. When you're spraying primer, you want to go in short little spurts. You don't want to just hold the nozzle down and go crazy because that's going to create a lot of pressure and blow your letters all over the place. For most of this sign, Dad used the profile bit. He started out at an eighth of an inch deep and he went that shallow mainly because this portion of the sign has a lot of fine points in it, even around the hand where dad's going to carve right there. And when you're going at 3 16 or a quarter of an inch deep, it's really difficult to get those fine points. Once he's done with this, he's actually going to drop it down to about 3 16 maybe a little bit more, and go back around. But to get the initial outline, dad's starting out at an eighth of an inch deep. Now dad added a little bit here. He added a little bit more contour to the mouth. He extended the arm on the Sasquatch a little bit. So remember when it comes to artwork, you have some creative freedom. Just because that's the way the stencil looks or the template doesn't mean that you can't add a little bit to it. Nothing's set in stone guys. It's set in wood. See what I did there? One thing you'll notice is that most of the time dad starts at the top of whatever he's carving and works his way down. One of the biggest reasons for that is because when you're pulling the router towards you, you have a lot more control over it. It's a little bit harder to get straight lines when you're pushing the router away. So now that dad's got the initial outline, he dropped it down to a little over 3 16 and he's going in and going over everything he just carved just to give himself a little bit more room when he comes back with the 90 degree bit. Now dad mentioned that we're carving this with vertical grain as opposed to it going horizontal. One of the things that's hard to do on that is if you hit a piece of hard grain and you're carving vertically along it, then you have to try to keep that line even though the grain is going crooked. So the grain could be going all over the place, but you have to try to keep the line straight. It can get really difficult depending on the board. So the middle of this board carved pretty well, but the outside had some tough grain on it. So one thing you wanna to try to make sure you do is that you go slow, especially if you're carving vertical grain. Cause when you hit a, a squirrely piece of grain, it can take your router bit and throw it way off and it can do it in a heartbeat. So the faster you go, the more chance you're taking at kinda messing it up. Something you might notice is that dad is actually carving over the same area multiple times in a lot of different spaces. Not always, but a lot of them. 
And the reason for that is you don't have to get the perfect line the first time. You can carve out, say, maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch away from the line and then work your way back in. That makes it a little bit easier. The only time that doesn't really come into play is if you're doing like single line outset. So everything around these letters is getting carved away. So dad knows that he has plenty of room for error on the outside of the letters. On the inside, not as much. The next bit dad's using is the 90 degree bit at a quarter of an inch deep. And he's gonna use this to make the cloud around the letters and to carve everything else out that's inside that cloud. And also all of the black that's left inside the stencil. This bit cuts really wide, so you wanna be careful when you're getting all of the inside stuff of the cloud. One thing you might wanna do is just kinda of practice with these bits. If you're fairly new or if you just got these bits, even if you have old bits that you're using but you got brand new ones, they're gonna cut wider than your old bits because they'd been sharpened for a while. So make sure that you do a little bit of practice beforehand and really get to know how your bits are gonna cut before you make something either for somebody else or something to sell. Dad wasn't 100% sure what shape he wanted this sign to be in. So a good idea is to do it with a pencil first. Now there's a lot of times where you'll have multiple lines. Like if you draw one, you don't like it, and then you draw another one. So once you get the line that you want, go back over it with a Sharpie. That does a couple things. Number one, it's a lot easier to see when you're carving. And number two, it keeps you from getting confused if you have multiple pencil marks. Now he's getting ready to cut the shape. When you're cutting shapes with a router, you need to have a sacrifice piece under your board because you're cutting all the way through and you don't want to go and cut into your bench, but it has to be held down. So dad's using blue tape and star bond for a temporary hold down. This works really well because it keeps your board from moving, but it's easily removable once you're done. The bit we use to cut out shapes is our spiral upcut bit. So he started off at about a half of an inch. He wanted to be able to do this in two passes, but he actually ended up raising that up to a little over a quarter of an inch because as he started cutting, it was chattering really bad. So instead of doing it in two passes, he's gonna do it in three. In something like this, guys, it's always better to be safe than sorry because using this bit and cutting through thick wood all the way through, it can get a little dangerous. So do it in as many passes as you need to, to feel comfortable with it. Once he made sure that the cut went all the way through, all the way around, then he just took a little tool and pried the pieces off. The sacrifice board is super important guys. Make sure you use that if you're going to cut shapes and that little temporary hold down trick works great. Now dad's going to use the spindle sander to smooth out the edge. If you're good with a bandsaw guys, that's another really good way to cut out shapes. But me and dad, we prefer the router. I'm getting a little better with a bandsaw, but I'm still not all that good with it. So this spindle sander comes in really handy. Now dad's going to use the 45 degree chamfer bit just to put a small chamfer on the front and back. I'll leave a link in the description below for all the bits we use today and they'll also be tagged in the products portion of the video. Once the chamfer's all done, then he's going to spray it with black primer. Remember guys, you can't use paint unless it is matte or flat. If you use gloss or semi-gloss, anything like that, it's going to bleed really bad and there's no amount of sanding that's going to fix this. Once it's dried, which only took a few minutes, Dad used the 80 grit disc on the disc sander to sand it off. Normally we use the random orbital too, but for some reason Dad just wanted to do it with this and it actually turned out really good. This disc sander gives a nice finish.
Then we put a few coats of clear on it, and man, this thing turned out really good. I think if you're selling signs, this would be a great stock sign to keep on hand. I'm super pleased with the way this came out. I had a vision in my mind of what I thought it would look like, but it looks actually a little cooler than I thought it would look. Had a lot of fun with this. Remember guys, if you're gonna cut your shapes out with a spiral upcut bit the way I did on here, make multiple passes, take your time. It's super dangerous. Probably if you're good with a bandsaw, probably would have been easier to do with a bandsaw. I just, you know, I'm a router guy. That's what I do. So. Links in the description below for everything we used. Thanks again for watching, guys. We hope you liked it. We love you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.